is me, Santiago. Uh, I'm just kidding. This is Kevin the Skull Anderson, and I'm going to do a request from one of my friends who happened to be one of the winners of my latest original character open. I'm talking about my friend Little Invisible 001, or as I'd like to call her, one of my good friends on DA. Today I'm going to be doing a sketch, or I should say a full-blown traditional color of her character Grave Aramoth, I think that's his name. But anyway, to hell with it, I'm not going to talk about this anymore. I'm going to cut the intro short and we're going to get the hell started, right? Let's get this shit started. Huh? Uh... Get started. Open this motherfucker. Okay. All right. I am the table! That's a Matthew joke. You know, that guy from Botchamania? You'll get it sooner or later, I promise. You'll get it. Soon enough, you'll understand. Kicking it old school like a fucking boss. Mind. I'm just improvising on the fly here because I give no fucks. I do what I can, and that's that. If it's not enough, I do better the next time. And if it's not enough next time, I don't even bother, so I just stay and shit in my own piss. Right? Because that's the mantra in which I live by. So keep that in mind. Right? I'm gonna go old school open this fuck, right? Yeah. Now keep in mind, this is not going to be a perfect picture. So you have been warned. To all you people who look for the next Vincent Van Gogh or the next Leonardo da Vinci, understand that while I am neither of those, at the same time, I'm also a talented artist in of my own, you understand? So just, just keep that in mind as you go about this, okay? Because it's really just common sense.
common sense, no assembly required. I mean, just in case you wanted to know some shit. Well, guess what? I know. Keep in mind, I'm not going to speak very much as I'm drawing, so in case you haven't got used to it before, you better get used to it now. I'll be back. Ah! Yeah, that's right, folks. I fucked up. Because even an artist like myself can fuck up from time to time, right? And we're all allowed to fuck up at least once in life. I know this because there's not a single person I know that doesn't fuck up at least once every day. And I'm guilty of that, so I know. So, shit. why I bought myself that white out to make sure that I don't fuck up like that right like the fuck up I made just earlier but yeah you understand so it's good it's all good yeah
right. It's right too. I got that white out. If ever you fuck up, go get the white out. The white out usually saves you from having to draw out some We already know this, it's good. It's all good. Won't even worry about it, not even a bit. Not even a little bit. I mean, you get it now, you get it. Because it's all there, black and white, plain as day, but, but most of you will never see it because you're blinded by the light. Blinded by the light! Backed up like a douche and into rolling in the night. I mean, I listened to that song at least once in my life, so. Shit. I don't even know what I should be reaction to that right now. But whatever. It's all good. What else? Fuck it. Fuck it! You know? I'll take whatever feedback I can get. I can. I. I don't care. <laughs> you know. Seriously. Because I don't. I don't fucking care. I don't. I'll say that straight up. I don't care. Oh, 
face, his full body in there. But fuck, I'm gonna try. It's, Also, it, it's going to be necessary at this point that I add some shade in there, because it's necessary. A little shade never hurt anything, right? Fucking shit, I don't know. What's my life? What is my life? Because I don't... <laughs> I don't play for keeps, no. I don't play for keeps. I don't even play to win. Because I live to win, but I know that I'm born to lose. So, at the end of it, the point is just fucking move. It's all fucking move. You get it? It's all move. The point is move.
And now, we come to the fun part. How the bell will get to that car, huh? Yeah. We're gonna get to the corner. Now let's bring, let me bring up that picture again. Just so I can get a better view. Okay, cool. Yes. Alright. Alright. I'm probably gonna have to... Probably gonna have to... Like in his eyelids, his, his, or his eye skin, I should say, because, because there's that skin that cover the eyes when they're closed, you know, but you get the picture, so it's good, so yeah, thumbs up in a nutshell, though, right. Let's get to the ship. Oh yes, the colors are good. Oh yes, this thing colors. Absolutely, this thing colors nice. Yes. about this thing.
couple of shades in there, huh? There's the oils. Shades. Tips of the hairline. And the hairdo. What the fuck else? Right? Got that shit right. Oh, the fucking head. Yeah. Add a little bit of gray now. This fucking thing. Gray to the start. It's gray. Add some gray. This fucker. Yeah. Yeah. As you know. The ultimate warrior. Fuck it. As you know, the ultimate warrior is set to face Rick Rude tonight. Rick, what do you, who the fuck put up that sign? You call that $200 an hour? But anyway, Rick Rude, what are your thoughts on the ultimate warrior facing you tonight for the IC title? things really get interesting because I'm telling you this is where the fucking magic happens this is where it all goes down yes and I get spit that's like it that's like a bunch of stuff getting done right that's like a bunch of stuff getting done. I wonder why I don't do this more often. Honestly. So you know the 1871 DC Organic Act, right? Man, that was a piece of shit! And I'm not just talking in Danny the Tourette's guy speech either. I'm talking real life, folks. That's the one act that turned this country into a shithole. You understand? Because, I mean, you sure as shit can't make this stuff up, because how the hell can you? It's impossible. You can't make it up. How anyone can make it up and get away with it is beyond me. 1871 DC Organic Act was the worst fucking thing that ever happened to this country, aside from Andrew Jackson and his trail of tears. That's why we've got so many people who are so dependent on welfare and don't want to work for anything that they want to get. That's why you got so many spoiled kids. Right? Seriously. And believe me, you know I'm not lying when I say this, because it's all true. Every bit of it. It's all true. All of it is true. So if any Democrat or SJW or retarded liberal tells you that the D.C. Organic Act from 1871 was a good thing, remind them as to why you voted Trump 
in 2016, and that'll scare them off. Because God forbid they get offended over anything you say, then you just have to tell them off, and they'll just go away. But they won't go away quietly, and it may come to blows, so if you have to defend yourself, give them the Bruce Lee treatment, and knock them out with a fucking blow to the fucking center of the neck to the Adam's apple. Bruce Lee style. That'll get him down for the count. Frankly, I'm not so sure on how many shits I should give at this point. If I should give any shits at all, maybe I should, but... I mean, that's on you, right? That's up to you to make the call, not me. Because I don't do this for money. No, I'm better than that. I don't beg people for money. I don't go on Indiegogo and beg people for money. I don't go on GoFundMe and beg people for money. Unless it's a dire emergency, then at some point I'll have to. Because there's a whole lot of people whose situations are relatable to mine. A whole lot of people who were just as deep in shit as I was. And then they saw the light and they never once looked back except to see how far they've come since the last time they looked back. Let me tell you something. Just because I'm different than most people, just because I'm antisocial, that doesn't make me any smarter or any dumber than anyone else. It just makes me more aware, more open to things, more capable of seeing the truth for what it actually is and not for what I make it out to be. And that's God speaking to you through me. That's not just me talking either. You people want the truth, you come to people like me and I'll give it to you. Because the truth comes from things that I can't understand and the truth is always there. It's in plain hindsight and God tells me these truths every day and he trusts me enough to tell you guys these truths because he knows that if I tell these truths as he sees best fit, there's no way I can go wrong. You understand? By the way, just a minute, I'm missing the period here. I gotta put that period in there. That rectified it, didn't it? Hells yeah. Surely as shit. Surely as shit. Yeah.
that in there. The rest should follow suit. Looking pretty dapper, right? Looking like a boss. Like a legit fucking boss, right? That's just like a bunch of drawings. Yeah, man. It's all about getting shite done. Because God forbid you ask that from a Democrat or a liberal or a wannabe fuckhead like Barack Obama and all they'll give you is 230 years of bullshit right and it'll never stop I'm telling you man it's so fucking obvious you just you have to listen to history you have to listen to God you have to listen to nature nature can tell a better story than any of us ever will and that's not counting all the disasters that have happened over the decades you know, with Galveston, Galveston, Texas has, has gotten hit with so many fucking shitstorms that it's practically impossible to tell what's real from reality over there anymore because the people in Galveston are so deep in shit. And this wasn't necessarily their doing either. No. That was God telling them that sometimes in life you have to face hardships. And sometimes those hardships are going to come at a hefty price. And it's up to you to figure out how you can pay for the tab. And if you can't figure out to, how to pay for the tab, and you can't figure out which way is right from wrong, then you're fucked. And you're better off just, you know, sleeping in your piss and shit. It's so funny to me when people say that. But at the same time, it's also funnier to think about how true statements like that are. Because, you know, this, this guy named Nietzsche, right? This guy named Nish. He was a philosopher, you know? This guy, I believe he was a follower of Karl Marx. He didn't really amount to shit. And neither did Karl Marx or any of his loser followers who gave no shits about people like us what to do whatsoever because all people like him and them wanted to do was fuck us all high and dry. There used to be a time in this world where things weren't anywhere near like that. As Protector of Summoning Fame pointed out, there was a time when everyone believed in God that time was called the dark ages and you know what he's right and you know during the dark ages times were a lot more shite more shite than any of us could care to let on but at the same time life was much easier much simpler we didn't have to worry about politicians fucking us high and dry every day we didn't have to worry about laws being passed under our noses that prohibit any kind of freedom for us. We didn't have to worry about bullshiteers like, like Chuck Schumer or Nancy Pelosi saying derogatory things about us or shitting all over us and our families' graves because we wouldn't listen to democracy or the teachings of Lord Baron Jacob Rothschild or his dynasty of a family or the other dozen or so families that own about 99% of the world's wealth but that's okay because you see we still have 1% of it so as long as we can hold on to that 1% or gain a little bit more we won't be bankrupt we'll still have a way to pay for our bills we'll be okay but the reason, the reason as to why all those dynasties that secretly control all financial aspects of life is because there are too many people out there who, whenever they end up winning a huge sum of money, like in a lottery or some shit like that, 
the first thing they'll do is spend it all in one place and then when they don't have it anymore they end up shooting themselves or committing suicide in some other form or fashion or they end up dying of lung cancer because they had a mental breakdown for too long. That's what happened to Michael Larson, I believe. You know, the guy of Press, of press Your Luck fame who in 1984 went on the show and exposed the show's systematic game board and the pattern of it. He had studied it for months and months and months before going on to the show. And believe it or not, though many people consider him the biggest cheater of the 80s, in reality, he didn't cheat. He just gamed the system. Because cheating and gaming the system are two completely different things. When you cheat, you fraud your way to a million bucks like that guy on the British version of Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. When you game the system, on the other hand, you figure out the pattern of said system in the way that Marco Larson did, and you figure it all out. That's not cheating. That's gaming the system. And Michael Larson gamed the system pretty good. Actually, I'm recording the live stream of myself on my Cyberlink cam. Thank you. I do the best I can. Yeah, and I did it twice this week. And I also cleaned up the bathroom in my in my bathroom actually. And um, I took out the trash. I did some other shit too. And those mozzarella sticks, by the way, are wonderful. So just a heads up, John. Just thought I'd let you know. And as far as that security system in your bedroom is concerned, I helped you out with that too. Saw your messenger post from a couple days ago and I chose to find a way to solve that problem. I had to move your bed a bit though, so there you go. Not sure how else to sum that up, but yeah. And I'm probably talking too much, so I'll just shut up. I don't know how long I've been doing this, this, um, this, this live stream of me drawing this up from a friend, Little Invisible 001. But if I could guess, I'd say I'd been doing it for about an hour now. So let me check the time. Let me check it. Well, I was close. I was pretty close. Somewhere in the vicinity of 55 minutes. So I'd say that's close enough. At least I'd think anyway. Because to hell, to hell with what I think I know. If I don't actually know it, then I don't know shit. Right? Let's add some shade there. To the pants. Yeah.
little bit of shade. The tip of the pants. Or the bottom, I should say. The bottom. That leads to the shoes. That's what I mean by that. That shit. I'm terrible with words anyway, so hell with it. Well, I don't even think it's going to make a difference at this point. So fuck it. What difference does it make? You know, I'm going to get out of here and skadoosh. That's a Jock Black reference. That's a Jock Black reference there. My week was wonderful. Yep. By the way, those mozzarella sticks were top of the line, oh, man. Really? See, I wasn't sure how they were going to turn out. I guess you put them in the, um, in the microwave, put them in a toaster oven. Toaster oven. Yeah, that makes it much better. I could try them in the microwave sometime, though. That is true. I won't deny that. Pretty much everything you tell me is pretty much the truth, so, I mean, yeah. Spaghetti fight. Uh-oh. Jerry, Jerry, Jerry. <laughs> Shit, man. I'm so glad they stopped taping new episodes for the time being, because I think Jerry Springer's been getting tired of it for many years now. So... Stanford Media Center. Holy shit. Yeah. I've been doing this for an hour now. A freaking hour. Jesus. Okay, you want me to help with that? That's cool. Awesome. I'm glad to hear it. Yeah, man. A little bit of glomp and circumstance. I mean, pomp and circumstance. You know what I'm talking about. Fuck it. Glomp, glomp. <laughs> you. Yeah. I don't know what came over me when I said that, but it sure as hell didn't stick.
I'll handle this. There, problem solved. There it is, folks. My friend, little visible double zero ones, traditional request prize for her being one of the winners of my 2018 original character open. Yeah, I know it's not perfect. It's not Picasso material. It's not, it's not fucking Claude Monet material, but it's still pretty damn good nonetheless, considering I don't hardly draw anymore and probably should more often, but anyway, I am going to leave it right there. So have a nice day. So long, and goodbye. Later.